So, you have a ministry we can monetize? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we monetize prayer. Oh, you mean we pray for money? I do that all the time already. Uh, no, I was thinking we charge people for prayers. You know, like when someone comes to you when they're hurting and broken and need prayer, but then you tell them, I'll pray for you, but it's going to cost you. So how much are we talking, like $4.99 a prayer, $9.99 a prayer, or do we charge based on the length of the prayer? I'm glad you asked, sir. Here's what I've come up with. If you're just a normal person, like not a minister, you start at the price of a cup of coffee. So if you're in New York, that would be about $12. You see, if you frame it in terms of a cup of coffee, people are willing to buy anything. They're like, a cup of coffee? That sounds so nice and inoffensive. There's no way anything could be wrong if it's just the price of a cup of coffee. Everyone can afford that, right? You, my man, are brilliant. So what if the prayer goes on for a long time? Well, if you go on past five minutes, you start charging 50 cents per minute. But once you're up past 10 minutes, it's going to be $2 per extra minute. You've got to value people's time, you know. Oh, I know. But it doesn't seem lucrative enough. How are we going to make it more sustainable? Ah, uh, well, we can upsell it in a few ways. For example, if you're a minister, you can charge more. How much? Well, pretty much whatever you want. You know what the good book says. The prayer of a pastor availeth much. That does sound like the Bible. So what else can we do to upsell this thing? Well, for the charismatic churches, we can slap the label of prophetic prayer on it, and then I figure we can charge hundreds of dollars for it. So what makes it prophetic? I don't know, but it sounds good. So is that a kind of prayer we find in the Bible? It might be. Fair enough, as long as it makes the big bucks. Hey, maybe we can throw in another premium category like anointed prayer. I love the way you think, sir. Thanks. But now I'm worried it's going to be really hard to get people on board with this. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, if anyone challenges us, we simply quote 1 Timothy 5.18 at them. You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Yeah, baby, that'll teach them to challenge us. There's no other way to interpret that verse, right? Nope, Paul wanted to give Timothy a blanket justification for monetizing every ministry imaginable. There's no way he could have meant anything else. Wow, it's a good thing you know your Bible so well. People really ought to take the word more seriously, you know. I couldn't agree more. But now that we're talking about the Bible, I seem to vaguely remember Jesus getting really mad because people were trying to sell stuff in the temple. What if people bring that up when we're trying to sell them prayers? It doesn't apply to us today. Really? It has absolutely zero implications for anything we do today. Nada. Nothing. But a verse about an ox does. Listen, sir, I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back about Jesus and other stuff in the Bible. Oh, okay. Let me get off of that thing. It's important to keep our eyes on the prize, sir, and cast off anything that hinders so we can make a decent living, as the good book says. But we probably should be careful not to sound greedy about this. You're absolutely right, sir. The best way to spin it is as a passionate desire to help people. That's what prayer is all about after all. Good thinking. And we need to make sure that people understand that if they're not paying for prayer, they're not going to value prayer. If they're not paying for prayer, they've got no skin in the game. They've got no reason to have faith. And, well, they're not taking the whole thing very seriously. You preach it, brother. You're confident that there's nothing else in the Bible that might clash with what we're trying to do here? There's literally no way for me to check that. Really? No. And we need to keep reminding people that this is about sustainability. How will prayer keep happening 20 or even 50 years from now if no one pays for it? Prayer takes time. And time is money. That's what I was going to say. I guess we've both got the same spirit. Must be a confirmation that we're doing the right thing. No doubt about it, sir. When the money starts flowing, nobody will be more prayerful than us. We'll be the ultimate prayer warriors. <sighs> I have a feeling this is going to work out really well. Hey everyone, if that video made you curious, confused, or even offended you, you're not alone. So let me point you to some free resources that will help you dig deeper into these issues. Links down below. First, head on over to the DorianPrinciple.org and read or listen to the book, which is thoroughly biblical in its response to the commercialization of Christianity. Second, Check out the website, copy.church, where you'll learn even more about these same issues, but from a different angle. And finally, don't miss Selling Jesus, which complements this channel. There you'll find a whole lot more to read and learn. And hey, if this video upset you, that's okay. But before you leave a comment, please consider thoroughly investigating the deep biblical and historical rationale behind everything on this channel. 
I think you'll be surprised. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope some of you will consider taking part in abolishing the Jesus trade and freely giving what we have freely received.